over Christmas and the New Year, I was contacted by a viewer and they asked if I wanted a 12 volt uh, LIFE PO4 battery to use instead of the 48 volt LIFE PO4 battery that we had previously talked about. Oh, I haven't brought it out with me. Oh, I've bought the 48 volt 16 cell BMS. Uh, I bought a QUCC. Uh, BMS to go in there, I just haven't wired in yet, I might take that in the house and do it inside but they have sent me a 12 volt one now my reason for, well I said yes because I'm not an idiot because they were going to send me a free battery so I said yes to the, uh, the very nice viewer, thank you uh, for sending me this uh, yeah 12 volts, I know I understand 12 volts, like we could use 48 volt and yes you can get a 48 volt inverter and all 48 volt things but I'm more likely to have use and things for a 12 volt system and I'm looking on the bench because I'm sure I had a 12 volt inverter somewhere albeit a small one I mean I need to get a bigger one so that we can actually use it for things I did, I was browsing somebody's uh, blog and I saw they had built their portable power station into like a trolley you know one of the things you push under your box of stack of boxes and pick up they basically like I'll leave a link to it and I'll put pictures up but they put all the batteries at the bottom and then they mounted all the electronics on this on the like the handles bit and I thought that was a great idea you've now got a trolley modular system you can move about and plug in and do what so I might do something like that anyway that brings us to the power source so this is a where's the name a go kilowatt hour uh, 12.8 volt LIFE PO4 battery so lithium iron phosphate uh, do not reverse connections, yes, throw into fire, heat above 70 degrees, short circuit, and disassemble. So, the last one there, that's absolutely what we're going to do is disassemble it. Uh, now, from what I can see, there are eight little, little, little holes, they're filled holes where the little plastic tabs have been put into. So if we can stab them out, those little things have got little yellow doodads covering the holes so let's get in there and peel them out because I want to go inside and see what is inside here all right I'll bring you back once I have got further inside there must be a better way of getting these little yellow things out granted it's probably because they're not supposed to come out or if they do come out you're probably supposed to replace them but for us, we will just use the pick and stab it in and prise them out and try not to lose them. No, uh, well, actually, I might. I don't know if you would consider this waterproof. Not really waterproof. I wouldn't consider this an IP rated. You're going to ping that off into the wild. Don't do that. Stab it properly. That's better. It feels oddly weighted, this battery. It's not particularly heavy, but like all the weight is slightly off to one side. It's not centered. Probably because they use the same chassis for a variety of other capacities of battery. Now the one they've sent me here, I did go on the website. Oh, I went on the website and they do a see-through version of this battery. It's um, plastic, see-through plastic covers, so. Uh, that would save you taking it apart, see the insides, but hey, here we are, we're taking it apart. So, this, they do, they do one that's got a screen there, that shows you the current level of charge. They do this one, which is the one that's got built-in Bluetooth, so we'll get the app and we'll follow the instructions and we'll do the Bluetoothy bit. And they do another, the third one, which is the screen and the Bluetooth, so you can see the state of charge. But I thought, if I'm going to build this in a toolbox, or some other sort of sealed container. There's probably not a lot of point in the screen if you're doing it that way, if you're gonna put it inside something where you'll never see it ever again, you probably don't need a screen. But Bluetooth, on the other hand, that is a handy thing to have. So I know it says not to disassemble, but I'm quite pleased that they have just used Phillips screws. They've not gone for daft security screws or hex or any other nonsense. It's just good old-fashioned 
Phillips head screws or GIS, I can't tell from you. They're not posies, I can tell they're not posies because they don't have a star on the middle of them. That's beside the point. Anyway, uh, right, let's have a peer inside. Right, is it? Oh, thank God it's not sealed. Right, come off. Oh, it's coming towards me. Right, hold on. I'm going to turn it round because then I can flip it that way. And try not to lose all the screws. So it does that. And nice big battery cables inside. Oh, they're machine screws. Oh, yes. Sorry, you'll see my OES in a minute once I realise oh, how many of these screws am I going to lose. None. Success. That'll be why it's oddly weighted, because the batteries are off to off centre to one side. So my initial observation is, we're using machine screws and actual, uh, the captive nuts inside the plastic. It's not just uh, self-tappers in the plastic body. It is actually proper, uh, you know, you press fit the machine fitting and you actually screw into the screw holes. Nice, excellent. Also a sticker in here for setting up the battery. Oh, and I can see the BMS in there. Right, let's... Uh, am I going to lose all these screws? Maybe not. If I undo them, then I can lift the whole thing out the inside. I just need a big Phillips screwdriver. Bigger than that? Right, if we just undo these. Right, I'm starting to lose the screws. Hold on. I'm going to pause it and pick out the eight screws before I lose them all. I have undone the, well, bolts for the terminals on the outer cover. And they are, it's not just a red uh, marking, that's like a thread locker, but not on the threads, because obviously you want your threads to conduct as much as possible. But that's just to obviously prevent vibration and whatnot. And I'm slightly tempted just to wrap a bit of tape around at least one of them just now. Just, uh, just in case. I don't need any, oh, sparks. Big sparks. So let's just wrap a bit of tape around there. Like that. Safety third, a bit of tape on there, and a bit of tape on here, and I'll prevent any... I'm not worried about getting electrocuted, it's only 12 volts, so I'm worried about causing irreparable damage to the batteries or the BMS. Although the BMS should have yeah, a powder cut it thing. Right, are these all stuck in place? Is the battery stuck into the inside? These and more questions. I don't think it is, I think it'll come out. I think it's just pressed in very well. Yes. Right, okay. That's probably stuck to the side. Reverend's got stucky, sticky tape everywhere. Right, we'll just turn upside down. Yeah, let's just turn upside down. Here we go. Mm -hmm. It might be stuck to the bottom. Is it stuck? Has it moved? Yes, it's stuck. Well, I was about to be not stuck in a minute, so here we go. I'm sure all these bits of foam pad are stuck in. Right, that side's not. That's not. It must just be stuck to the bottom. Right, I'll fight with this for a few minutes and bring you back once I get out. Oh, if someone sends you a nice battery for your Christmas, do not take it out of its fucking box on the first go. Oh. Oh. I'm out. Nice box though. Does it say what kind of plastic it is? Oh, it smells great. Oh, it's polycarbonate. It's very shiny. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what kind of plastic it is. But here we have ugh, the. I'll try not to sit on that side because it's got sticky, sticky pads there. Right. Well, there's the BMS. A battery management. So we've got a negative from the battery on the BMS and then output from the BMS. I wonder if it's got. So, from my readings and whatnots and looking for a BMS for the other 48 volt battery, I found out that some of them have got built in switches. That's why I also chose the QUCC. You can turn it on and off 
you can turn the BMS on and off via a simple, like a little teeny tiny switch. You don't need a big, you know, 100 amp uh, rocker switch thing. So that would save me when I'm doing it for the, obviously for the e-bike battery modification, I can just have a little on off button. I don't need a big clunky on off button. But I'm looking to see if this BMS has any sort of uh, on off button that you could, it does. It's got a switch. Is there a jumper in this switch? No, it is an open switch. So, I wonder if you can turn it on and off via the Bluetooth app. But there is a position in there to have an on-off switch button. Who makes this? Who makes this? It's got a, a number. Uh, it is a DP, that is uh, Delta Papo, Delta Papa, 04. Sierra 007 dash Sierra version 1.6 So I don't know who makes this. Is there any other? I don't see any other names or whatnots on it. It might even be I do see a little aerial trace for the Bluetooth in there But other than that, there's not a lot to see in the old uh, battery pack department. It's just a big I don't even know what kind of what kind of cells are in there? And is, is there any way of non-destructively having a peer inside to see what kind of cells it is? I can see... Big... I can't see anything. There must be a way in. How sticky are you anymore? Oh, you've lost all your stickiness, that's fine. Let's have a peer inside. What if we just cut the tape and retape it? I mean, I've got Captain Tape. I could just tape it back up again. If we just peel this back panel off, how about that? Sounds like a terrible, terrible idea. All needs a, like a little knife or something sharp. But not too sharp, because let's not stab any batteries. Let's have a look inside. If we just tease this bit of tape off. Wishing I had gone, gone and got a knife right now. Right. Come on, let's have a look inside. This is well, well put together. This is nice tape. Right, here we go. Sliding down. Da 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 da! Is that? That's um, pouches. Let me just roll you onto the back here. Right, can you see in there? They are big pouch cells. That's interesting. I was expecting 18650 type or bigger, but they're not. They are pouch cells. Interesting. Yeah, there's a. Hold on, can you see in there? Can you see down in there? Look, there's a st stack of pouches. One, two, three. No, I'm not even trying to count them because I have to peel everything off to count them. But. There is a stack of, so it's pouch cells, not, I mean they're still, uh, so, people have had this previous misconception about pouch cells being more dangerous than, you know, normal 18650, but that's more to do with the battery chemistry than the actual shape of the cell itself, because these are still LIFEP04 batteries, so still absolutely safe and resistant to explosion, fire, uh, the dendrils that go from lithium uh, anode to cathode, or cathode to anode, they're resistant to all of that, so still perfectly safe charging, discharging, all of that, because they're still uh, those ones, uh, the life batteries, but in a pouch format. Okay, that's interesting. Right, what about this Bluetooth app? Let's. Let's. Oh, still fairly heavy being life cells. Right, first app. Se oh, first step, second step. Scan to download Zhaijing Electric. Ah, where's my phone? Let us get out the secondary phone. Play Store. And we'll look for the. Uh, Zha Zhao. Zhao. Zhang. Zhaojing Electric. Uh, that, that one? Uh, 
let me, let me use. Yes. Oh, that's handy. Yes, no, don't know. Okay, never mind. Right, okay, back to the play store. Let's go. Right, let's just try this one, the Xiaoxing app here. Right. Right, open. Uh, jump login. Right, allow position. All right, right, nearby devices. Okay, we've found something. Connect. Du, 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 du. Well, that was easy. State of charge, 49%. Uh, battery voltage, 13.17 volts. Okay, uh, let me use my handy dandy multimeter here. And, well, the output from the battery would be that one. And, oh, let's go right around the right way, just so for sake of. 13.17, I've got 13.14. Take that, let's go from battery to battery then. 13.16, 14, alright. Current power, current not doing anything, balance isn't doing anything. It's charging, charging, discharging. Right, can we go, can we see cells? Control. Dish, ah, we can turn it on and off, yes. Excellent, right, so. If I've turned it off, the output from the battery should now be zero. I mean, just punch that in the head. Here we go. Eight volts, and it'll be, well, I imagine that's eight volts because there's no load. Uh, if I, we'll test it later. There'll be no uh, actual output. So if we turn that back on, it should now go back up to 14 volts or 13 volts. Yes, we've got an on-off switch. Yes, a soft on-off switch. Excellent. I don't have to use a big, a big clunky on-off button. Excellent, this is brilliant, yes. Auto balance, okay, whatever that's doing. Got warnings, what have we got here? History, any history? No, there doesn't appear to be anything. Control, like that. parameters. I was hoping, I haven't seen on, I've seen on some of the apps you can actually see the individual cell voltages. Device model, version, BMS model, that's what I said, uh, uh, Sierra Papa 22, Sierra 001 version 1, okay, right, mine, oh that's just the, uh, ignore battery optimization. oh right, okay, no, no, don't, 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 don't do that, that's this for the app, that's not, not this battery optimization. it's the phone's battery optimization. I kind of wanted to see cells, that would have been nice to see if there's a, Is that too can all right yes obviously just for scrolling through the other apps you might or the other batteries you would have so if you had let's say two or three of these batteries you can connect to them and then go through them individually and turn them on and off and you can give them names can you give a name yeah so you can give your battery a name one two three four stephen michael matthew or any of your other bits right so i'm only slightly disappointed to see i can't see individual cells but that's okay. Right, well, Bluetooth app works. No, and uh, I suppose we should now connect something up to the battery to see if it works. I mean, I imagine it is. Well, let's try just now then. Let's get the power supply and see if it will charge. If it says it's at 49%. I am behind you with the variable power supply. Come, variable power supply. Right, at uh, what voltage? Is this off? Yes, right. Uh, okay, right. Set that there. First supply. And a positive and a negative would be nice. You can jam a positive connection in here. Oh, that feels really safe and secure. How about we just clip it right on the positive tab? And obviously this one needs to go onto the... Uh, no sparks, that's a good thing. 
Right, we'll just clip that on there. Now let's unclip that and turn the power supply on first and see what voltage it's set to. Right, 8 volts, marvellous, that's probably not enough. So let's go... I mean, I'm going to say 14. Let's just presume you've installed it in your camper van and it's now doing 14 and a bit volts. So... 14 a bit volts. Right, here we go. We're now charging. Currently charging at 5 amps. And estimated time to charge is uh, 10 hours, it says. Although it's counting down in not seconds. It's doing, it's doing washing machine time. 10 hours. Remaining capacity, 48.72 amp hours of the 100 amp hours. Which we'll have to try in another video. I'll put the other battery. Oh, hmm. I wish I had battery terminals. I'm sure I can just screw it on. The little current clamp meter thing that I've got for the other normal batteries. It's got a water meter built into it. So I'll put that on and then, well, we'll flatten it. Charge it up to max, flatten it, and then we'll see if the 1280 waters matches what the little meter says. More, more or less. Wait, I've actually lim limited this current. Could it go more? No, that's it. Maxed out. Charging at 5 amps. Well, I don't know. So, current input, 4.52. Yeah, that's 4.5 bang on, just about. Nice. Man, that's got to take a long time. So, at 14 volts, that's going to take, uh, like, 12 hours to charge up. Whew. Yeah, that's going to be there a little while. Right, good. So, for our first video in this battery, in our uh, thing, we're going to charge. I'm going to leave it to charge. And then I come back, I'll do more. Wait, was that, is that cell temperature? Or is that just like a generalised battery temperature there? 12.8 degrees? I mean, it is. Yeah, it's 10 degrees in the workshop just now. 3.32 volts average voltage. I presume that is the average voltage of the pouches. Why? Why would? Why is balance and protection off? Why would that be a thing? Why would you not want? I mean, it's got auto balance. It sh should be on. Reset capacity. How would it know what the capacity is? No. Balance is on now. Good. That's what we want. We want the balance on. Protection off. Why would you, how could you, how, why would that ever be off? Why would you not want, I don't know. Anyway, charging, this is right, okay, let's just leave that to do its things. Okay, so, for our first video, we've had a look inside the battery, we've taken it outside of its shell, we found out it's got pouches for the battery cells. We've got it connected to the Bluetooth app, we're now charging it on the power supply, and once it's charged, I'll do another video of discharging it and we'll compare the discharge capacity to the capacity that is rated on the box. And I think that'll do us for today. Any questions, comments, anything like that, please leave them down below and I'll try my very best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.